Right, so I want to tell you a little bit more about Polyfit. So we're going to be using it for lots of different assignments in, uh, in MATLAB. So I want to just talk about Polyfit. So if, imagine you've sampled some values in X, okay, from 0 to 5, 20 times. And there is some function, Y, that's given, I'm going to call this the true Y, the real Y. It's just the cosine of X. Okay, so maybe we can plot that to help see that. X true Y. Um, we'll plot it after this next bit. So here, I'll put it here. But you can't, when you measure something in any experiment, in any piece of engineering, you can never measure what's really there. You, there's always an error. So I've added an error by adding a random set of numbers, and this creates a random set of numbers. There's one col column, that's one column with the same length of x. And this is going to generate numbers between 0 and 1, so I've subtracted 0 0.5 to be numbers between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 plus the true value. So let's compare the true value with the measured value. So this is why we're going to, this is where we typically use polyfit, okay? So I'm just going to un, I'm just going to comment out my next lines here not to confuse us with these plots here. We're going to get to them. That's still true in data, yes. Measured. Run. Takes a while, doesn't it? Okay, here we go. So as you can see, the true is this thing that looks like cosine. And the measured is a bit noisy. It kind of jumps about what's true. But in reality, whenever we measure anything, we never really have what's there. We have this orange curve here. So imagine you're given this data for the orange curve and you're asked, can you recover what's really there? The true. That's where we're going to use polyfit. Basically, this is machine learning. You're now learning the beginnings of machine learning. So what we're going to do is we've got to decide, we're going to fit the data the measured data, we're going to give it all the x values and the y's. We're asking it to fit a polynomial. It means we're telling it, we're assuming that y equals some constant 1 times x to the power of 4, that's the first one we get there, plus another constant times x to the power of 3, plus another one times x to the power of 2, and it keeps going, okay? And the first one that appears here, that's what you're putting here. So what do we choose? Is 4 good? Don't know. Maybe, maybe we should choose 100. Maybe we should choose 1. Why don't we choose, start with 1? Let's see how good that is. So you fit a polynomial that just has, if you just choose 1, then it's going to be just this here, isn't it? It's just going to be P1 times X plus P2. That's it. A straight line. You're asking it to fit a straight line. It's only got two numbers that it's going to try to guess what they are. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot that. So this is, gives us the coefficients. We're going to get a new range for x because you, when you have, when you've discovered what is p1 and p2, you can now specify your own x if you want to sample more times. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to sample more finely, 200 times, because before we just had 20. And now polyval, what that does is it evaluates what is this polynomial for a given x. So that you don't have to write it out by hand like we did in the previous tasks. So that's it. We've got x2 and y2 from the polynomial. So we could actually call this poly y. So this is the y predicted by the polynomial. Okay. So now let's plot. We're going to plot the true value. We're going to plot the data measured. And now we're going to plot what polynomial estimates. I'm going to call this the last one polyfit. OK, let's get an X label. And um, we don't need a title at the moment. So run script. OK, how well did we do? The true value is the blue the measured of the orange dots, and the polyfits just given this line here. It doesn't look like a very good fit, does it? Have we done a good job at recovering what is the blue? Hmm, no. I don't think the data was a straight line. So in this case, it's said that we've created too much of bias. We, we've kind of enforced what we think 
is the, the true value, a straight line, and it wasn't. But we can make things better. We can increase the value of the polynomial. What if we choose 4? So 4 has a this term, has a cubic, has a quadratic. So a lot more flexibility, a lot more constants to choose. Maybe 4 is the magic number. Now all we have to do is run this again, because this function here will just adapt to the number of coefficients perfectly. So we'll just run it again and have a look. Ah, look at this, the power of machine learning. So now we have predicted the yellow from the data. It's not bad. We've gotten pretty close to the true value, considering that all we had to work with was this orange. Imagine that you tried to draw a line through this orange dots. Would you get as close as the yellow? I mean, maybe not. This is pretty good. But is 4 the right number? Is it a polynomial with only 4 terms? Maybe there should be 14. So how do we know when to stop? Imagine you didn't know what the true value was. So this is what we're going to try and teach you in this little mini class. If you choose a value that's too small like 1, you create a bias. It doesn't fit the data well at all. 4 did quite well. But if we go too high, we're going to get another error called overfitting. Let's try it out. Here we go. Using p of 14, how well did we do at recovering the blue line? Not so well. Look at the massive errors we've induced in some areas. As the polynomial, as the function, the yellow function, has more flexibility, it tries to go through every single orange point. And sometimes to do that, like to go through these first three, it had to dip down extremely low before going back up again. And that created a huge error. And this error would actually get worse as we increase the polynomial. Let's go, I don't, actually we can't go to 24 because there's only 20 terms. Let's go to 19. I think it'll give a bit of an error because you're not usually allowed to go to, yes, it gives us a warning. But it does try, look at that error. An error of over, I don't, how, it was 1 and now it's gone to 200. What percent is that of the error? <laughs> a lot, 2,000% error. So huge, humongous error, you've done terribly, just because you've asked it to use, to try to fit better the points. I'm going to lower the uh, order so that we can see this better, because this is very difficult to see. Here we go. The more we increase the order of the polynomial, the better it goes through all the, the orange points. But that doesn't mean it's recovered the original, the original function better. That's called overfitting. So um, in machine learning or data science, what you would learn is that there's an optimum. There's a degree at which you can um, you do quite well at going through the data. But if you were to try to predict some new data, you would do well at that too. So one way to do that is to remove some of these points and keep them and don't fit a polynomial to them. So how would we do that? Um, we'd have to take what's called training set. So training set here. So we only use a part of the data to fit a polynomial. So if you go and revise sampling arrays, this is going to take, what I've written here is going to take the first term from measured data, then it's going to sum to and take the third term. So just to write in the comment, this is like I've done equal measured y and taking the first term and then the third term. That's because I put a 2 here. It's going to skip one, fifth, and so on until the end. So I've taken a part of it for training, and I'm going to take a part of it just to test to see how well I did. So this one is going to be different. It's going to start on the second element. Okay, and we've also got to figure out what x's we use. So we're going to take the training x. I just like to remind you that this is very optional, what I'm teaching you right now. Okay, 
this is not going to be tested at all in this course, but it's just a nice thing to learn. Training X, oops, press the wrong key, and now test X. We'll just do this really quick and complete this. Test X is going to do the same. So this is taking a part of the data for training, a part for test. So what have I always teach you? Plot. Let's just plot this first. Let's not do any changes here. We'll just put this at a reasonable order just to help see the plot. And instead of plotting the measured, we're going to plot the training. We're going to plot training Y, training X, and we're also going to plot test X and test Y. So now we've got to put that this is the true training and test. Okay, let's run that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, you can see that the training test is the orange dots and the 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 test one the one that you're not going to train with is yellow so all that means is that some of the data is going to be used to fit a polynomial and some of it's going to be used just to test if it works and that is a simple that is all you need really to to help resolve this problem of figuring out what order the polynomial should be so now here we go we're going to instead fit just for the training set Okay, and when you fit for the training set, you can then predict to see how well you did for the test set. To do that, I'm no longer. I'm just going to plot. I'm going to poly test y. So now I take p, and now I predict it for the test x. Okay. Or better yet, let's just leave it as it was and predict the whole thing. And we'll just see how well it does from the picture. Okay, run script. Okay, so here we have um, the polyfit that used just the training. Now, you could write this in code or you can just look at the picture. You can now compare how well it did, how close it got to the test points. It, w it doesn't know the test points exist. It didn't use those test points to fit the polynomial. So you could have a look. You could write, to, write this in qu a quantitative check, or you could just look to see how well it did compare against these yellow dots. And then if you chose a polynomial that was too high an order, like 10 will be, you'll see that it does very badly at predicting the yellow test dots. And that is a way See, it would do terribly. That's too bad, actually. Let's get something that's not so bad so that we can actually look at the results. Nine, I think, should do it. Let's see. Nine might still be terrible, actually. Don't be so terrible. That's still terrible. But if you compare how well it does on average, the yellow dots, it does terribly. So you could write that into the code to automate and figure out to stop increasing the polynomial order when it does really badly at predicting the test yellow. Okay, that's all we had to say. Remember, we're not going to be tested. You're not going to be tested on this. This is just an extra. Okay.